another person's going to get fat. Fat, 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 fat. It's a good thing, right? In case there's a famine, you want a little extra stores on you. That's what I say. And uh, so here we are. Oops, a little shaky camera. Um, and it's not because of my nerves. Uh, we have a fuerte here, and I often get asked quite often, uh, Gary, can you show us how to plant an avocado tree? Well, why would I need to if you hire me to do it? <laughs> anyway, uh, here is the proper way. Uh, you want to basically mound the thing up a little bit. You mix in some really good soil with uh, your native soil. You want to build, uh, build up the whole mound. I tell people over time you want to sprinkle all kinds of mulch all around here, everywhere. So these roots will spread out, they're surface roots. And then you can actually spray down all of this material so it's sponge-like in quality. Think of a forest floor after a rainfall. That's what you're trying to emulate. Um, so I just planted this one, I still need to water it. He's just a little bit, a little bit sulky from the trip, a little sulky. Uh, but uh, anyway, I figure uh, some people have said, well, you know, you show us how to do it after it's done, but you don't show us in process. Got the YouTube channel, gotta keep it real. They're my happy clients. They're trying to keep me healthy. <laughs> um, I'm a firm believer of that six distance rule. It means I don't have to wear anything. Um, because I hate masks. I don't know about you, uh, but I don't like masks. So I'm just gonna stay away. I'm, I'll, probably, I'll, I'll promise to stay seven plus feet away from you. How's that? So I don't have to wear that. But uh, anyway, so here's the proper way to plant avocado. The most important thing is to mound it up a little bit, mix in some good soil with the bad soil, 50-50, and then uh, have your beautiful uh, top layer of bark, and there could be no such thing as too much bark. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this process from start to finish, and we have a, you're probably wondering why I'm not wearing my hat that I always wear. Well, this is why. <laughs> because, because it was taken from me because he said, well, if I'm going to do the digging, I want your hat. I said, well, that's fair. So anyway, uh, Carson's going to dig the hole here. He basically, well, actually, I'm going to help him too. We're going to dig a hole about that deep right there. It's about a oh, foot, maybe 14 inches. We're going to leave the top bit above grade and the dirt that we dig out spread all around in a circle. And we're gonna use that dirt for the uh, elevational grade difference and also to mix this in with the good stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna jump onto the green sharpshooter shovel and uh, help this guy out. Maybe if I work really hard, he'll, he'll think that I earned my hat back. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He said, uh. I don't know what that means in teenage language. Yeah, I do. I promise you every step, and I almost skipped one here. In a box, the first thing you do, folks, is you take the bottom off. You take the bottom off on one side, shovel or anything you can, and you take the bottom off on the other side, and I will demonstrate with a one-handed shovel punch. Boom! 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 That's why they call me Super Scaper. All right, that's the next step. And then we're gonna roll this thing in. Maybe not roll, since this is square. I got it back. I earned my hat back. Because he's the videographer now, and I am the grunt laborer. And I grunt really well. I've, it's like grunting is an art. They found that when you grunt, you get surges of testosterone and surges of strength, like this. Get in here and spread your weight. Legs out nice and wide. Get to the edge. And what's going to happen when you get the pot to the edge, the 24 inch box to the edge? You're going to find that you've dragged a bunch of dirt in there. So you need to stick your hand in there and be very careful not to pull the palm in or the avocado, whatever you're planting, while your hand is in there or God forbid your head is in there because it may fall and that might be the end of you. So you keep grunting a little bit. Let's slide in like that. Hold it back. You get up and you do a little bit of this. Yeah. And you're done. Next thing you gotta do is make sure it's straight. And it looks That's fairly good. straight. Leaning this way a little bit. So to compensate, I'm going to pull it out like this. Again, a little bit of a grunt will help. Like that. There you go. If you're a male, the girls love it. I found uh, the grunting thing. And if you're a male, well, the guys around you will respect you a little more if you grunt like an ape. Uh, it's just how I've been my personal experience. If you grunt loud enough, people tend not to mess with you, right? Okay. Here we go. Next step is to get our cutters. 
Carson knows where those are. If you're not gonna hire the legendary Carson Gregg to plant your avocado tree, Akalani's High School 2020 Most Outstanding Athlete of the Year. It translates into planting avocados as well, I found. Um, if you're not gonna hire him or me or both of us, you're gonna wanna know these tips. You're gonna want one of these. It's a wire cutter. And after you put the tree in the ground, you have to take the bottom off first, which we already showed you. Now, you need enough room, which we looks like we don't have, <laughs> to cut the band. So I'm gonna reach down here. Probably gonna get this guy a little bit of a pull. Well, this is just gonna be kind of tricky. You have to take off my, my uh, Hollywood glasses. See what I'm doing. Grab the band, give it a cut. Grunting helps. Actually, this is really tight. This is uh, operator error. We should have actually had a little bit more space on this side and I'll show you what I mean by that. You just have to pop yourself a little piece here, get your hand down in there, and then you can cut that band off. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck here forever trying to get your box off and you don't want that. Now I have to, would have been easier to do this before uh, I actually put the tree in, but you know, when you're a producer, editor, uh, site location specialist, um, uh, video promoter, talent, uh, and uh, grip, and sound, and all those things, it's hard to do everything right. So uh, there you go, got your bands cut, then simply and magically, the box will just fall apart ever so easily, and then you will have yourself a beautiful tree. So there's that part. The whole thing with avocado trees is you do not want to disturb those roots. It's a tree that really, really hates its roots disturbed. Palms are the opposite. They don't really care, most of them. There's a few that don't like it, but most of them don't care. So then you stack your boxes up. You can reuse these boxes later by rebuilding them. So we will do that because we love our earth and we don't want to cut down any more trees than absolutely necessary. Uh, you see the tree actually settles a little bit once you do that. So there's your, your final chance to straighten it out. You want to take a look at it from two angles. This angle looks fairly straight. It's got to lean that way a little. And then about a 45 degree, looks like it's leaning this way a little. That means I need to push it that way a little. So you want to do that ever so gently. This is something you shouldn't need to grunt for. This is just ever so gently. Put a little dirt on the side. See how the root ball is falling apart? Look at that. That's why we do it ever so gently. Don't want this root ball falling apart. Here's all these hair roots. They really do not hold soil together very well at all. Look at this hole. It looks like a glacier clefting off because of our global warming. See that? So we don't want that root ball to fall apart. If that root ball falls apart, we have big problems. We don't like big problems. We don't like any kind of problems. We like no problem. No problem, but that's what we like. Uh, now it's perfectly straight. Next thing we do, which we'll have to cut for because we don't have the soil here, put the soil down, mix it with this soil, backfill it all, make a really beautiful little mound and a water retention reservoir that we can flood. And uh, that's pretty much it. We'll give you a couple more tips here in a minute. Okay, the next trick is you want to get some highly organic material like we have here. We have perlite mixed in, we have bark mixed in, we have shavings mixed in, we have uh, like even like chicken manure, all kinds of good stuff. So what we're gonna do, we're not gonna just cover the whole root ball with it. We want to go around the tree as such. And so it's going to mix with the excavated soil that we pulled out of the hole. And then you'll see what I do next. Of course, when you're digging the hole, you want to put the dirt right where you need it, which is basically in the form of a big dam. This dirt over here was wasted. I shouldn't have put that there because it really needs to be here. But anyway, you just pick your dirt up, mix the soil in a little bit. Try to use a lot of the good stuff around the root ball. I usually just put all this material up on top first, like this. As far as watering goes, we'll talk about all kinds of things that will give you a successful result. Uh, right now, it's July. This is the uh, 
the most evaporative time of the year for Northern California. You would think it would be on the longest day of the year at summer solstice, but it's not because it takes the ocean a while to warm up. It has a delayed effect. And because of that, and because of the fact that we're so influenced by our ocean with our weather here uh, next to the coast, we have a delayed peak evaporative moment on average, everything being equal, and that is about July 15th. That's where we are right now. So that time of year, and especially we have a heat wave right now. So you can see we're planting this thing in the dead of summer. Everybody says, well, well I want to plant it in spring or fall. It doesn't really matter when you plant it as long as you follow these directions. Uh, it's kind of good to plant it not in the middle of winter, only because if you get a big freeze, uh, the tree will be still juvenile. Uh, but uh, we haven't really had a freeze like that in seven or eight years, and I think every year it's less likely that we're going to get a freeze like that because, uh, because of the heat meister of global warming. So, and the Arctic is warming up the fastest of all, and that's where the freezes come from for us. And pretty soon it's going to be ice free. So, the air masses that start there during a climatic condition that bring that air mass here with a jet stream that goes right at us, well, it's like an old refrigerator with this door open. It doesn't have the power of cold air like it used to. And so when the cold air blows out of the refrigerator, it's just not as cold anymore when it gets outside the refrigerator. We're outside the refrigerator, so whenever the air mass gets here from the Arctic under the same conditions that bring the air here, it's going to deliver air, which is uh, not as cold. That's my theory. I'm the only one that's ever said that, so I wonder what other people think, but it's, it seems like it's rather obvious. Okay, we get our bark, which happens to be on the wrong side of the yard. For every tree we plant, we put in a bag of micro bark on top. This is a basically glorified uh, forest litter. And uh, I say forest litter because these trees, they grew up in a forest component, a continuous canopy forest component, whereby they uh, had all kinds of falling debris all around them all the time, and it built up over centuries. And so they have this amazing organic uh, composition in the soil. We're trying to replicate that. Now you can replicate that with stuff you buy like this, or basically just about any kind of mulch you can imagine. Uh, grass trimmings, weed trimmings, leaves of other trees, uh, sticks, bark, whatever. It'll all decompose. The tree will send out these hair roots. It'll live in here. You want to have this whole area covered, ideally, with a thick layer of mulch, like six inches. Uh, then, you want to get some uh, micro sprayers out here to spray that area down. Right now when it's young, you just get this area wet here, but in the time you want to get everything wet around it and that will cause the tree to send out all of its little baby roots and um, get super happy. Now we have some water being delivered and I'll show you how I like to water it. Okay, Am I, you getting my head? Is the cameraman doing a good job? Can't see Is he it. doing a good job? I think he might be hung over. I'm not sure. He's acting like it. Anyway. Um, but uh, I like to give the tree a little bit of love on the top. What you might not know is all these trees, all of this biotic material has the ability to suck up moisture through any part of live tissue. And that could be roots, it could be stem, it could be leaf. So when you do this to the plant, it immediately stops the evaporation, which is a good time good time of year to do it right now because it's so hot and you'll stop this wilting if I see that the leaves are curling inward like this that means that the plant is trying to hide from the sun right here because he's stressed out because we've been planting him moving him down the road and everything and so what you want a happy tree will have its leaves totally wide open trying to receive the sun and so this tree in a matter of an hour or so after I water it will actually uh, pretty much be like that and recover that quickly. But uh, anyway, as far as like uh, watering goes, you're gonna wanna like just soak this thing really, really good the first time because all the ground is dry around it this time of year. And you want the water not only to wet the root ball, but the whole area around the root ball. And when you do that, you'll cause a situation where it'll take longer to dry out. Therefore, you could have a longer interval between waterings. These trees do like to dry out a little bit in between waterings. So I, I don't like people watering them every day. 
it, you know, most every other day, even in these hot conditions. And uh, we're gonna go water the other tree now, so you can follow me over here. What happens when you spray the cameraman? He gets mad. Uh, so over here, the same thing. This is a fuerte tree. The other tree was actually a uh, lamb hoss. Lamb hoss actually has some fruit on it right now. Sometimes you'll get fruit, sometimes you won't. If you get fruit, well, that's fun and great. But if you don't get fruit, well, that's kind of a good thing too because these trees, when they're younger, they really shouldn't have much fruit on them so they can concentrate on growing and bulking up rather than uh, fruiting because the fruit really takes a lot of energy from the tree and can stunt it. Little tiny trees, if they get fruit on them, which they can do, they can kill them. I've done that. <laughs> so, yeah, the more plants you kill, the better gardener you are. That's the way I see it. And I've killed a lot, so I'm a pretty good gardener now. Um, the other thing you want to do with these trees, especially soon after planting, very important that you paint the green stems and the cameraman will come in close and tight here and he'll show you what I'm talking about. All right here, right there, right there. You want to, any bit of this green stem that's going to be exposed to sunlight, you will want to meticulously paint with white paint and you can use white latex paint or a very light colored latex paint if you'd like a different hue of color but it needs to be light colored to reflect the sun. And you mix that one third with paint, two thirds with water. You either try to do it in a spray bottle, sometimes they clog, or you can just meticulously put it on with a paintbrush. It's kind of like, uh, what's that movie? The, uh, the Karate Kid. Yeah, he's like painting the fence, you know? So they get into Zen. Same thing with the avocado tree. Give the avocado tree love, and it will love you back. Um, what else can I think of? Now, as it gets cooler, and the days get shorter, the interval of watering can increase and the uh, amount of water. You're probably gonna wanna put five to 10 gallons of water on big trees like this. These are 24 inch boxes. Each time you do it, uh, if it's a smaller 15 gallon, maybe like three to seven gallons at the most. And, uh, and also you see how the plant is mounded up, just like in the mountains of Mexico where it's native to, where it has, um, volcanic, well-draining, porous soil covered in organic matter. That's what we've replicated here. It's a, it's a condition we have where water's gonna move through it. It's not gonna get stuck on the roots because it's mounded up. Gravity's gonna take it away. And we've replicated the forest floor by using the mulch. The best thing of all for the mulch on the ground are the leaves of the avocado itself and its own stem tissue. It loves to cannibalize itself. All that stuff will fall off. It's like my skin falling off and me seeing it on the ground and, and eating it. I know it sounds a little gross, but that's kind of what the avocado is doing. It loves to eat its own material. And avocado leaves actually have a compound in them as they decompose that protects this plant from Phytophthora root rot, which is one of the nemesis of avocado production. That Phytophthora is generally only in soils that have been planted historically as avocados. So when you have virgin ground like you have here, you really don't have to worry about Phytophthora too much with these trees, but we mound it up anyway. We don't want root, out, root rot of any sort. And um, I think that's pretty much everything you need to know to grow an avocado tree without having to hire me or pay me a dollar or, or a single penny. How's that? <laughs>